Well, hi everybody, my name is Matt Kluskowski. Welcome to the latest video, five tips that you probably did not know inside of Lightroom. And please note, I said the word, probably. <laughs> um, so this one doesn't require a whole lot of setup. We're gonna dive right in. The only thing I, I will let you know is, these are tips, I think, I think they're great little tips. Uh, I often present them in the context of the workflow. So rather than just say, hold the shift key down to do this, I explain to you how I'm working, why I'm working, what I'm doing, and then why holding the shift key down to do this can come in handy. So just keep that in mind as you go through each one because I do wanna set that up rather than just throw a tip out there, give you a little bit of the idea behind my workflow. Hopefully these tips help you out as well. Let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, the first one, is a feature called match total exposures. And it's it's one that sneaks by a lot of people. I And with with many of these, I kind of have to set it up. Like, why would you want to use this? So here's a case, I, I whatever I'm shooting into the sun, I bracket. And a lot of times when I'm shooting water, I bracket, because I like to get different versions of the water. And then later on, when I can see it big on the computer, I'll pick whichever one resonates with me. So here's bracketed and you know it's got water included in it. Well. I'll go ahead and I'll develop one of the photos to a point where I'm like, hey, you know what? Overall, the exposure is fairly balanced to me. You know, maybe not perfect, but pretty close. I'll develop one of those photos, but I want to see the other ones. I want to see what the water looks like and, and everything else. Well, what I can do is hold down the command key on the Mac or the control key on the PC and click the other exposures. Okay. And then I can do this for all these bracketed photos. So just command or control click just to select all of them. All right. So I'm basically, I've selected a whole bunch of bracketed exposures. However, here's the trick. It, it's hard to see, but down here in the film strip, one of these is highlighted more than the other ones. It's the photo that I'm looking at. That is what Lightroom calls the most selected photo. So this is what it's going to base it off of. And then I come up here to the settings menu. Remember we're in develop and I go down here to match total exposures. Look at the film strip here. I'll, let me go ahead and make the film strip a little bit bigger for you too. Watch the film strip when I click on this. See that? So it just went in across all these different bracketed exposures, some were dark, some were light, and it matched them. So now I can go through and I can review and I can kind of figure out, you know, especially with the water, which water do I like the most? I do this a lot when I'm photographing water. Which water version do I like the most? And I don't have to go in here and bump up the, the, the shadows or the exposure or pull it down because now they all have an even exposure value to them. It's not always going to be dead on, especially if it was overexposed. It won't bring the detail back any better, but it does help me pick my favorite one out of the group. Number two, let's head over to this photo here. Here's a, a fun little trick. So if you're using the adjustment brush tool, so let's say in this example here, I wanted to, I wanted to darken this little, uh, this little piece of uh, tree that's kind of sticking out there. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to darken it and I want to use the adjustment brush to do that. So usually, you know, we're going in here and, and you know, we're kind of just painting along there. That can be, you know, kind of tedious. A lot of times I don't need that level of detail. A lot of times I can, I can get by with doing it really, really quick. So what I do is I get my feather down here pretty low, 30 or 40%. Um, and then I'll go in here and I'll size my brush. And by the way, this is really only going to work for things that have a straight edge that, that you want to work with. Um, and I'll size my brush to be about the size of whatever it is that I'm working with. I'll even let it go outside a little bit. I just want to pull the exposure down there. And then I'm going to click once right up there. Okay. Then I'm going to do is go down here to the bottom and pull my brush out about the same as it was before. I'm going to click, but this time I'm going to hold the shift key down before I do it and watch what happens. Lightroom draws a straight line between those two areas. So rather than me kind of going in here and trying to paint in and you know, hope that I keep it straight, uh, it's just a faster way to draw a straight line. And there's just a lot of situations where you might have, whether it's architecture, a house, a bill, whatever it happens to be, and you might want to draw a straight line with your adjustment brush, just hold the shift key down and it'll do that. I'll, I'll kind of make it a little bit more obvious just so you can see it. Let me crank up the exposure, click once, shift click, Again, and you can see it just drew a straight line between there. All right, next up. Uh, before I do that, I just wanted to have a quick word from our sponsor, which is always me. Um, folks, number one, thank you so much. I've been getting so much great feedback uh, from everybody here on my videos, and I really appreciate it. And if you're interested, the best thing you can do is just go ahead and follow. So 
I post these both on uh, YouTube and Facebook. YouTube obviously has a subscribe button so you can subscribe and then it's got notifications. So if you don't want to miss any videos and I only post one or two a week, so it's not like you're going to get bombarded with notifications. Um, it'll just make sure you uh, get alerted when I post them. And then of course, Facebook has a like. So if you're watching it on my Facebook page, just go to the page and like the page. And of course, there is also notifications that you can turn on to if you'd make sure you don't want to miss any video. So I really appreciate it. All right, number three, this is a, this is a, a fun one. This one blows a lot of people's minds because they never knew it was here. So let's say, and it's, it's kind of got more of a professional use to it. I don't know that just you know, doing this with your everyday landscapes is, is really going to work with it. But let's say somebody, let's say you're, you're making an image for a specific, maybe a magazine cover or some type of a, a graphical element. Okay, that you know there's going to be graphical elements on it and you want to preview what they look like without necessarily jumping over to Photoshop every time. Well, what you can do and, and what I did, let me show you really quick. Uh, let me show you really quick what I made here. Um, what I did is inside of Photoshop, I made a document and it's simply just it's it's, it's going to be all white and it's on. There we go. Let me change the exposure. I made a document of white text on a transparent background and I saved it as a PNG file. So when you're in Photoshop, you have to save it. You can even see it down here, a PNG, because that supports transparency, okay? So just remember, it's just white text on top of a transparent document, which is why you don't see anything. But let's go back over to our folder. So what we do is we get our image ready. We you know get it to whatever your liking is for that image. And then check this out. You head up to the View menu, go down here to Loop Overlay, and you would go and choose that layout image. So just go save it on wherever you save that PNG file onto your hard drive. You just go choose that PNG. And I, I've already chosen it, so it's gonna show up inside of here. Oh, apparently it doesn't wanna show up. And let's go ahead and choose the PNG file. There we go, look at that. So it pops it right on to the photo so you can get a preview of what your image is gonna look like. This is a magazine cover, maybe it's a business card, whatever. You would go into Photoshop and you would lay out your graphics to the size of whatever you needed. Again, save it as a transparent PNG file, pop it in there. And now I can go in and, and say, well, you know what? I know if this is destined for something like this, the edges are a little bit uh, too bright for me in some places. I can't see the, the text. So maybe I go in here and add a slightly heavier type of a vignette on there. And now I can see that white text. Uh, a little bit more um, and you can develop your image to suit what it's going to look like with that overlay on it. And then to turn it off, you just come up here to the view menu, go back down to loop overlay and then just turn show off and it'll go away. Okay. And at that point it should reside in your recent ones. Okay. Here's another one. Let's go back over to this photo. So let's say we do want to be a little bit more meticulous when we're brushing go to my adjustment brush, bring the exposure down. And we'll go through here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to brush and I'm going to be darkening and everything like that. And let's say I try to get close to the edges. Well, if I get, try to get close to the edge, obviously it's going to start to, to bleed over. Okay. So let me undo and I'm just brushing along this time. As I get close to an edge, I'm going to hold down the command key on the Mac or the control key on the PC. And I'm just going to make sure I keep that middle crosshair from going over the edge, because that's what Photoshop is using. It's essentially turning on the auto mask feature. All right, let's turn the overlay on and I'm going to do it again because I want you to see what's happening. I'll be brushing, I'll be brushing. If I don't hold down command or control as I go to the edge, even though that plus, that little crosshair is at the edge, you see it's spilling over. This time I'm brushing, I'm brushing. I get to the edge, hold down command or control, and now you'll see it's automatically turning on the auto mask feature. I don't have to go down here to the checkbox and turn it on. It's automatically turning it on. And then when I'm done with it, and I just want to brush over here, I just let go. And then I can go and I can brush anywhere I want. All right, last one here. So again, I have to kind of set this up. I just can't give you the tip because I think you need some context of, of how it would be used. So a lot of times, you know, I've got a good sky um, and I think the overexposed photo would be too much, you know, so I've got a good sky. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take either the brush or maybe the radial or the graduated filter and I'll go in there and I'll bump up the exposure and I'll bump up the shadows and go ahead and just very quickly just kind of drag that upward. 
Okay. And now I'm able to, to really bring out some of that detail in my foreground and sometimes exposure helps, sometimes shadows, sometimes a combination of the two. Okay. Um, and then all the time, you know, whenever I do, whenever I bring up the shadows like I did here, a lot of times I'll go in here and add some warmth to them as well because you got the sun shining through. Shadows tend to get very cold. So we'll want to go in here and bring that up as well. Okay. Now, here's what will happen. And it doesn't always happen. I don't know. You could come back a, a, an hour or a week later and look at this and say, you know what? I went too far on it. All right. Or the other thing that could happen is you go to the next photo and you decide, well, I, you know, I can use something similar that I did on the last photo. So let me just hit the previous button. So you're almost getting like another tip. Like this is tip number five. A. Um, I hit the previous button and that'll apply the previous adjustment to it. So here's where this comes in. It's obviously too much. Rather than go to each slider and try to pull it back, you can always hover over that little adjustment pin, hold down your option or alt key. So you just go to the slider, hold down your option or alt key, hover over, and then drag to the left or drag to the right. And so what's happening is, it's, it, instead of you going over here and moving each one manually, you hold down option or alt, and notice how all of my sliders are moving over on the right hand side. So they all move together. So this keeps you from having to go in there and kind of move each slider. It's almost in a way, kind of like an opacity setting. You're almost just bringing down the opacity of everything that you did with this adjustment pin. Another thing that you could do is go over here to effect. There's a little arrow that twirls downward. You could click on that and it rolls everything up. And by the way, if you ever see this and are wondering where all your settings are, it could be that you've accidentally clicked on it. And then now you get an amount slider. And so now I can go in here and adjust the amount of that. So again, it's almost kind of like an opacity slider. You can go through here and move it either way. They pretty much both do the same thing. So it really becomes about whichever way sticks with you for remembering this. Um, you know, sometimes it's just easier click, move the amount slider. Some people like the keyboard modifiers and to do it that way, but really two different ways to get to the same thing. And I think the biggest thing to know is it not only works with the grad filter, but it works also with your radial filter and the adjustment brush as well. Folks, Hope you really enjoy this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as I mentioned before, if you uh, do enjoy the videos, please stop by the uh, the YouTube or the Facebook page and uh, go ahead and subscribe to either, either one of those. And that way, make sure you don't miss any videos in the future.